Ooh, this one hurts me. I don't like champagne problems. It's good, but not as great as people make it out to be. <laughs> Debut is not her worst album. Me is actually a bop. Aside from Don't Blame Me, her vocals are mid. Mid! Ooh, you guys are bold. You guys are being bold here. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, it's Nina. If you are new here, welcome, I'm so happy to have you, and if you're not new, thanks for coming back. Honestly, I've just been such in a Taylor Swift kick lately, I mean, when am I not? But it's just been more aggressive recently. Over the past month, I've put out quite a few videos just talking about Taylor Swift theories, the re-records, secret albums, the recording process, and all of that, and then someone gave me this great idea to react to unpopular opinions about Taylor Swift. Now, this is interesting, to me because I feel like I'm pretty reasonable with a lot of these things. Even though I might not agree with some of them, I definitely can understand where people are coming from. And so yesterday I posted an Instagram story for you guys to drop your unpopular Taylor Swift opinions. And can I say there was a lot of them. You know, usually I have my iced coffee for these sit down videos, but it is after 5 p.m. Caffeine after five is a no go. So today we're drinking hot chocolate, even though it's probably 90 degrees outside right now in Southern California. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Okay, so I've pulled up Instagram here looking through all of your submissions and there is way more than I thought. I'm gonna start with this one because I got so many of these and it's just kind of like become a joke in the fandom, but everyone is saying me is actually a bop because so many people hate on that song, the lead single from Lover, Me. And at the time, it was so fun. The music video with Panic at the Disco and just the vibes were all around very high. But I think when Taylor Swift comes out with any song, the Swifties are immediately like, this is amazing. Like literally I, I am like this as well. I will like anything she puts out. And it definitely took me a couple listens to be like, okay, I, re I like this song. I feel like just over the past year, like very recently, everyone has been hating on me and it's been like a joke on TikTok. Do I think it's Taylor Swift's best song? No, but I don't think it's like that bad, you know? I think it's fun and I think it's served its purpose. My sister loves that song because she loves Panic at the Disco and it's a really fun song, you know? Sometimes you just need like an upbeat, very simple, happy song to improve your mood. I don't know. But I do think the me slander goes a little too far sometimes. I do feel like we are allowed to not like every single thing that our favorite artist comes out with. I don't think that's like possible to like every single thing somebody does. Maybe some people do, but you know, there's definitely songs that Taylor Swift has put out that you listen to more than others and me is just one that I hear in the mall and I bop to it while I'm shopping at Macy's. This is funny, 1989 is so underrated even though it has some of her biggest hits. I personally don't think 1989 is underrated. I do think people give it the appreciation it deserves. I think it's a great album that definitely gets that notoriety. And I think there's some songs maybe that don't get enough attention. Like I think the deluxe tracks, specifically You Are In Love does not get enough hype. I love that song so much, but I definitely think 1989 is up on this pedestal for Taylor as well as all the local fans. I feel like a lot of people, if I ask them what their favorite Taylor Swift song is, they say something from 1989. So I definitely think it is not necessarily underrated per se, but it has underrated songs on it. Someone says debut is not her worst album. I don't know what that would entail if that means like you think another album is her worst album. I don't think any of them are bad. I don't think any of her albums are bad, but of course debut is going to be like her earliest songs that she's written. Of course she's going to get better over time. So the songwriting improves, the production improves, everything improves so saying it's like the worst is I mean if you're comparing it to what she has put out in the past year of course I think her songwriting and everything is much better but I definitely think like cold as you doesn't get enough hype for that songwriting I still think the songwriting on debut is like a plus. I don't know what would be her worst album though. Interesting. So I had two people talking about Better Than Revenge and they want to know my thoughts on some of the lyrics in it and what we think she's going to do for the re-recordings. I personally don't think she is going to change the lyrics. I think it's a very kind of, I don't know, it could be seen as slut shaming, but I think that's at the time. I don't know how she got away with it at the time and nobody kind of like raised a question there. I remember singing this in like seven seventh grade. I think it took me a couple years to be like, oh, oh, <laughs> that's what that means. 
it's I think it's just a teenage girl being mad that someone stole her boyfriend. I don't think it has to be that deep, you know? Either way, I don't care if she changes the lyrics, whatever, if she keeps them the same. I think the song is immature itself. It's an immature song, so of course, as much as we try not to tear down other people, other people can make you mad sometimes and say things that you probably don't really mean in the time. Someone says dancing with our hands tied is not the worst song on reputation. I didn't know that was a question. I didn't know people thought that, because dancing with with her hands tied is like my top three on reputation, especially the acoustic version, especially. So I agree with you, I guess. Ooh, this one hurts me. I don't like champagne problems. It's good, but not as great as people make it out to be. <laughs> oh, that really hits because I love champagne problems and I think the bridge is one of her best bridges. I think someone else said that in here that champagne problems is one of her best bridges and I will agree with that. I think the minute I heard this song, I knew I was gonna love it and it captures an emotion that Taylor Swift doesn't talk about a lot, which is like, you know, that regret. It's giving like back to December vibes, but like more mature. I think it's very relevant and it's very relatable. So I have to disagree with you on that one. Evermore deserved more attention. Yes, yes it did. I don't think it got that hype as much as Folklore and I feel like a lot of people in the fandom have this opinion where they say Folklore is a better album as a whole but Evermore has better like single songs and I kind of agree that Folklore was a little bit more sonically cohesive but I think some of my favorite songs are from Evermore, you know? Champagne Problems being one of them. Coney Island, I just think the songwriting in Evermore is like, I get that they're sister albums, so they're very similar together, but I think, yeah, the songwriting in Evermore is a little bit different somehow. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, Justice for Evermore. <laughs> I hate Sad, Beautiful, Tragic. Oh. <gasps> Guys, you're killing me. Okay, I understand if like that's not your favorite song on Red, but I don't by any means hate it. I think that song is very poetic and metaphorical, especially with the production of it, because the beginning of the song sounds like a train stop, like a train station, and I think like the whole storyline is very good. The parallels, just standing by the train tracks, like a very liminal song, like a, like a passageway through time. So by no means do I hate that song. I think it's very sad and it's not one that I listen to a lot, but I do appreciate it a lot. Oh, you guys are bold. You guys are being bold here. Aside from Don't Blame Me, her vocals are mid. Mid! There's a lot of compilations on YouTube that prove Taylor Swift can really sing. And I think at the beginning, she definitely, it's like insane to me how much Taylor Swift has improved her voice over the years, especially since starting out in country. I feel like her first two albums, she kind of struggled with high notes, control, especially singing live. But I don't think she's mid now. Jeez. And I think you can see that with Fearless Taylor's version. There's so many songs on there that I heard where I'm like, wow, her voice sounds so good, so much better than the original version. But the reason I think Taylor Swift made it and was successful was not because she was the best singer, but her songwriting, her presence, her charisma, all of those things make a star. And I don't think just being able to sing well makes you a star. You know, I feel like a lot of people go on those singing shows, The Voice, American Idol, and they can't make it. Even though they have a great voice, they can't last long after their initial success because they don't have all those other things that make you a star. Stage presence, songwriting, the ability to like connect with fans. Like there's so much more that goes into being an artist than just how well you sing. But I definitely think Taylor Swift sings so much better now. And I think you can see that in all of her recent performances and everything. I don't think Taylor Swift's voice is mid at all. Being too many of her live shows, she's amazing. Another recent live performance you should watch if you think Taylor Swift's vocals are mid is her cover of Can't Stop Loving You. I'll link that down below, BBC Live, I think that was. I remember seeing that and being like, wow, she sounds amazing. Someone says Speak Now is her best album. As much as I want to agree with you because Speak Now is my favorite album, I don't necessarily think it's her best album, but the fact that she wrote it all on her own is such an amazing feeling. Beat. And I think, yeah, some of her best songwriting is in Speak Now. I don't know if I would say it's her best album. I really can't say what my what I think her best album is because I feel like I am biased. So I don't know, maybe it's either, mm, uh, it's gotta be like either Folklore or Red 
Taylor's version, maybe? I don't know. That's a hard one. Someone says, the way I loved you is iconic, especially in the summer I turned pretty scene. I can't tell you how many times I've watched that scene over and over and over again. And I would tell you the minute me and my best friend heard the music coming in that scene the first time we watched it, we were like screaming. Yes, that song has a whole new meaning to me now. And it's just even more iconic. And I'm really glad that when Fearless Taylor's version came out, that that song got the hype that it always deserved for sure. And her vocal are so much better. This is funny because these two are right next to each other. Someone says folklore is better than evermore and someone says evermore is better than folklore. I think that is like a very split decision in the fandom. I can listen to folklore all the way through with the exception of maybe skipping a couple, whereas evermore I feel like I have more skips but I listen to single songs a lot more, if that makes sense. So I love them for very different reasons and they have very different moods. Folklore to me I can listen to in the summer time and evermore is like my Christmas time album. That's just how it goes. Someone said she should make more self-written songs more than like one per album. Yeah, I'm curious why Taylor Swift doesn't write alone more often. I feel like sometimes I really enjoy those ones the most. Cornelia Street was my favorite from Lover. Lover was another one of my favorites. I love that she wrote those on her own. Of course, all of Speak Now, obsessed with, and I think maybe for the re-recordings. I hope anyways that the vault tracks are all songs she wrote on her own just to kind of drive home that that album is like all her but I do like the songs that she writes with other people and I love all the songs she wrote with Joe like I love Champagne Problems, Betty, Coney Island like everything that he had a hand in I also love. I think it's very important to collaborate with other people sometimes it brings out another perspective gets you out of a writer's block so I understand why she'd be working with a ton of people she just wants to learn so much more about songwriting and then she can take what she's learned and put them into a song maybe that she writes by herself. But yes, I agree. I do love when she writes songs on her own. Ooh, someone says Rep isn't a bad album, but the singles were not the right choice. I think Look What You Made Me Do was a cultural shift, and I think that could definitely be the right choice, especially with the music video and just like everything with that song was the right choice for a lead single. However, I understand why she chose Endgame because, you know, Ed Sheeran is it was just like a collab song, but I really wish she would have chosen either Getaway Car, King of My Heart, or Dancing With Their Hands Tied for another single. I like Delicate, but I definitely would have rather have seen those or maybe like New Year's Day. I don't know. I really liked like the touchy feely songs better than the like pop hits, the mainstream ones. I kind of agree with you on that one. She should have chosen maybe one of those other ones for a single. This person writes, debut is better than Folklore, Lover, 1989, and Evermore. OMG, I'm gonna get attacked. <laughs> it's okay to have opinions, I think. I think we're all entitled to whatever we like the best, and every single person can identify with some songs and albums better than others. So that's why I never judge people for saying like, oh, I don't like this album. I think this one is the best album because, you know, whatever you've gone through is what you've gone through, and if those songs help you through that, and if you identify with those songs, who am I to judge that? But it is funny that you say debut is better than all of those, you know, but there was definitely some songs on debut that I relate to a lot, especially in high school. So people are allowed to have their opinions. Oh, I like this one. Girl at Home is a really great song. I think people really used to hate on Girl at Home, the original version, but I think the new version of Girl at Home, people are finally like appreciating it. And I think this was what she wanted it to sound like, but they maybe made her produce it in a way that's more kind country than pop. I definitely think the new version gives the full vibe, the full story. I definitely think it is underrated and I really was so glad to see that she made those changes. Even though I did like the original itself, but I think she made it even better with the new version. Okay, I like this one. It says, Taylor isn't perfect. She makes mistakes and we shouldn't hold her to a standard of perfection. Of course, I feel like people look at celebrities sometimes, especially someone like Taylor Swift, who is like so, so prevalent in pop culture because she is like one of the most followed singers out there. She gets the most streams, like has so many like number one albums and Grammys and stuff like that. She just like feels really far away, but like everyone's a human. Everyone doesn't know what to say all the time, doesn't know the right thing to do. The way I like to think about it is her job is a singer. Her job is a songwriter.
writer. And some people's jobs is real estate or an office job or teacher or anything else. It's just the fact that she has a platform and eyes on her that everything she does is under a microscope. Our mistakes aren't magnified in that way. So I don't feel like a lot of people give a lot of grace to people in those positions. So I try to, you know, take everything with a grain of salt. It's just so easy to be canceled these days. And I feel like everyone's just trying their best not to be. So yes, I think we just need to like chill out. Everyone needs to chill out and not think Taylor Swift is so perfect all the time because she's not. She makes mistakes as does literally everybody else. The only thing is like, if she makes a mistake, millions of people know about it and have opinions about it. When I make a mistake, you know, just people around me know about it, I guess. I don't know. It's not on the internet for everyone to see, but yes. All Too Well is way too overplayed and overrated. You know what? It's kind of funny. All Too Well used to be like our best kept secret in the fandom and now that it, you know, All Too Well 10 is out with all the hype, it honestly was kind of exciting to see people discover the song for the first time. And honestly, the Taylor's version, 10 minute version is like the version to me. I don't really listen to the five minute original version anymore. I just like, I really love the bridge, the extended bridge. I feel like all the missing pieces are there and I just, love it because you can scream it in your car it's a sad song but it's also one that you could scream and I just have like really fond memories of this song and everything about it and so you know to some people it could be overplayed now but I never get tired of I never skip all too well 10 I don't <laughs> Someone says, All Too Well isn't Taylor's saddest song. It's an amazing song, but not her saddest, I feel. I agree with this. I think there's so many more songs that are sad, specifically Last Kiss. I think Last Kiss is Taylor Swift's saddest song, as well as Ronin, Those Make Me Cry, for sure. Someone says, her and Joe are married already. I won't believe it until I hear it from her, to be honest, but good for them if they are. August is overrated. I disagree. I love August so much. <laughs> Someone says her merch is too expensive. She has the main focus on the USA Swifties. I think this is true. I don't know. I'm not a huge spender on merch because just because I don't feel like I want to spend 70 plus dollars on an item of clothing, especially when I don't particularly really like the designs of her merch sometimes. The one time I do like it, it's like a hundred bucks and I really like fan made merch better and I think it's cuter and the people on Etsy are killing it with their Taylor Swift fan merch. As far as like international Swifties, I know that it's harder to get merch and they really need to figure it out because there's so much potential for fans that are all over the world. Everybody should have an equal chance to get whatever merch they want. Okay, we're gonna do a couple more here. This one says, I love 1989, but I don't like the 1989 era. I think it made her mental health much worse than before. This is interesting because I feel like in the time, like I don't think a lot of people realized that, but that 1989 era was a very interesting time because I feel like a ton of new people joined Taylor Swift fandom. A ton of new people loved that album and opened her up to so much more criticism and so much more pressure to continue to stay at the top. Coming off the 1989 tour, there was just like so much Taylor Swift hype and finally everybody liked Taylor Swift after the whole like, you know, 2012, people were just like so mean to Taylor Swift online for dating people and just living her life. Finally, she was getting good press. It was probably like the hardest time for her because she, you know, she opened up about that in the Miss Americana documentary about how her, you know, mental health was struggling during that time, especially with body image, looking a certain way and just like being very like scrutinized for how she looked and everything that she did. I think the 1989 era was fun in the time. It's like, oh, we're having fun, right? Everyone's fun, we're like, you know, but then I feel like when she was in the reputation era, Era was like the truly happy era and not just trying to appear that way and I think for me I loved the rep era so much and it was just a very like happy era for us because Taylor Swift is was just like finally let go of everything it was just being herself and all that kind of stuff so yeah I agree with that to some extent you are in love is one of her best songs she's ever written agree that is my favorite Taylor Swift song literally ever 
She looks terrible with bangs. I think she looks good with bangs. She's had bangs for most of her career, so that's unfortunate, but I love her hair. Anyway, it is even Bleachella. Lover is not her best work, felt unfinished and rushed. I don't think Lover is her best work either, but there's definitely some songs on there I really loved, and it's just a very fun, positive album. It didn't feel super, like, cohesive. It's definitely not my favorite Taylor Swift album, but like, you know, Cruel Summer, Bops, Cornelia Street, again, just like one-off songs that I just really like and I love listening to. I think with the new re-recordings, those might have potential to be my favorite Taylor Swift albums and like the best that she has done because I feel like with Fearless and Red, both of those were very good and improved on those albums in different ways. I'm just waiting for Speak Now, Taylor's version, and I feel like I'm gonna love it and I have really high hopes for that one to be my favorite. Okay, I think that's all of the ones I'm gonna answer today, but if you guys wanna see more of these types of videos, let me know and I'll do a part two to this so we can talk about more unpopular Taylor Swift opinions. But I just wanted this to be like a fun video for me to go through and read your guys' opinions on things, even if they're not the most popular or what everybody thinks. Definitely agree, definitely disagree with some of them, but everyone's entitled to their own opinions, you know? And you don't have to like every single thing that your favorite artist puts out, but you can, and that's the beauty of it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you're not already subscribed, go ahead and do that. I post new videos every Tuesday and Friday, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. I think, okay, let's get a thumbnail. How can I get a thumbnail with this horrible lighting?